Hi everybody, Simona here from VectorTwist. In this tutorial, I would like to show you how you can create an isometric design. We're going to create an isometric castle tower that you can see here on the screen. And the most important thing for an isometric design here in Illustrator is to set up your grid. There are tons of ways to set up your grid, but I would like to show you a new way you can set up a grid really quickly with a grid pattern. So here, let me show you right away how we can go about it. The first thing we want to do before we set up our grid is actually go to View Smart Guides. When we turn on the Smart Guides, this really helps us to lock our points and paths into place. So again, you can find those Smart Guides under View, and then we're just going to click Smart Guides. After that, we want to find the Polygon tool. So the Polygon tool we can find here in the toolbar. So when I click on the Rectangle tool here and hold the mouse button, all the way down here is the Polygon tool. So we select it, and now you can see crosshair icon here on the screen. So let's just click once on the artboard, and we'll get the pop-up for the polygon. I'm simply having the radius set to 60 pixels and the side to 6. We want to create a hexagon. The hexagon is really the best way to set up your isometric grid. So once you put in 60 pixels for the radius and number 6 for the sides, just click OK. The only thing we need to do now we need to tip it. We'll just simply using the transform panel. Now the transform panel we can find over here on the bottom. If you don't have it open in your setup, simply go to window and scroll all the way down to transform. In Adobe Illustrator CC, we have some nifty add-ons to the transform panel. We can now precisely rotate an object or a shape, and we simply have to select the shape, and then here in the polygon angle, we'll set it to 30 degrees. And watch what happens. Now if I deselect, it stands on his head, on the point so to speak, really precisely at 30 degrees. Now let me zoom out for a second, so we see the whole artboard. First we're going to select our hexagon, and we'll shrink it down. Now we can either use again the transform tool here, and I could just make it smaller by 50%, so instead of 120 in height, I'm just typing 60. And if I want it even a little bit smaller, I can maybe even set it to 25% of his original size. All I need to do again is zoom in. So I'm using the zoom tool, so we see exactly what we have to do next. We want to create a pattern, and then when the pattern is set up, we can use it as a grid and turn it into a guide. But first, let's change the stroke into 0 0.25, and then we want to use the pen tool. So here in the toolbar, we'll select the pen tool, and as you can see, because we have our smart guides turned on, no matter where I click, it gives me extra information here on the screen. It'll tell me when I'm right on an anchor point and when I make a line, a straight line or a curved one. So first we want to create a vertical line. We want to divide our hexagon. So I click once and then again on the bottom here. I'll also do that with the diagonal lines and another one here as well. As you can see now, it does not snap directly into the corner, but we can easily fix this. So first we're going to use the zoom tool and zoom in very closely. So here just I'm going to select the direct selection tool and I select the anchor point and then I'm trying to place it onto this anchor here of the hexagon. But you can see it does not want to snap onto it. First we have to check under view if we have anything snapped. And you can see down here we have checked snap to pixel. We want to make sure that nothing is ticked here. No snap to grid, no snap to pixel no snap to point. So I will uncheck this here, and now if I select point here of our line with the direct selection tool again, I can place it directly on to the corner point. Now I want to repeat this and make sure that all of the other points line up as well. So each time I'm just going to the corner and make sure everything is placed properly. And since we are working with the smart guides, they really help us and tell us when we're on the other anchor point. So one more last check down here, and I think we're okay. And then last corner fix here, and that's it. So now if we zoom out, now this is our setup for our grid. First, it doesn't look like much. Just a hexagon with a vertical line and two diagonal lines. But if you can see here and imagine a plane on top of here, and let me just select all of it, go to Object and Lock Selection. If I start drawing a rectangle following the top shape here, you can see that we are creating our first plane. And then if I choose a darker color, 
and I create another shape following the lines of our hexagon. This will help us to create our isometric setup. Now let me delete those and now let's set this hexagon with the lines up for an isometric grid pattern. First we have to unlock everything again and then we we'll select it and I think we should even set our stroke much smaller. So let's set it to 0.125 points and then let's zoom out a little bit. We need to create a repeating pattern. First we're going to group it so we go to object group and then we're going to create a copy. I'm simply pressing the option key here or the alt key on the keyboard and then drag a copy on top of here. You can see that with the smart guides it tells me where it intersects and then I let go. Now if I zoom in I want to make sure they're aligned properly and as I can see everything is aligned okay. Now back to the selection tool I'll select both then I go to object pattern and I select make. Now we have a pop-up that now a new pattern has been added to the swatches panel. You have a choice to check here don't show again but if you always want to have this showing up so you know you got a new pattern here in your swatches panel, just leave it as it is. So we press OK. And now we can see how it repeats. Of course it doesn't repeat properly. It needs to be budded up. We need to change the bounding box here around our pattern. So here in the pattern options, we simply have to check this tool here. And now we can actually resize it. But we need to be really precise. So first, let's just click Done. And let's go back and actually measure things. Now I need to find out the width of our object. So I'm selecting it. The width is 25.981 pixels. Now I'm going to copy this value and then I'm going to the swatches panel. Since we already have a pattern swatch in here, all we have to do is double click it and it opens it up again with the pattern options panel. I want to make sure that this is not checked so it does not keep the proportions. And for the width, I'm going to activate again the pattern tile tool. I'm going to paste the value that I've just copied. As you can see, it'll move it straight next to each other. Now I'm clicking done again. Now first we need to find out the exact height. And we need the height from this part here of our hexagon all the way down to the bottom. Now as you can tell, this would be three times this line here. Now since we set up our hexagon as a radius of 60 pixels with six sides, I know that each of those sides is 60 pixels long. But we shrank it down and remember we shrank it down and made 25% of its original. So all I have to do is divide 60 by 4, which makes 15. And then I have three lines here. And then again add it up, multiply it by 3, which makes exactly 45 pixels. Now when I open up our swatches panel, I'm going again to choose the pattern tile tool. And then for the height here, instead of 52.6443, I'm going to type 45 pixels. And now if I zoom out, you can see that our pattern gets repeated perfectly next to each other. Now of course we want to give it a name here, not call it new pattern. So we'll simply call it isometric grid. And then we click done. And now if I hover over our little swatch here, you can see the name isometric grid. And now we are ready to create our isometric grid guides. So first let's zoom out. I'm going to set the stroke to none. Then I'm going to choose the rectangle tool. And then I'm going to draw a rectangle of the size of our artboard. And I'm going to fill it with our isometric grid pattern. Now it looks a little busy small, but when we zoom in, it looks perfectly. So in order to use your pattern over and over again, with a new document, another artboard, or just like for future designs for your isometric designs, the best way to go about it is to save your pattern. Once your pattern is saved, you can always open it up again and again. So first we're going to the swatches panel, and then we click the flyout menu, and then we go and select all unused. Now this selects everything we really don't need. If you have extra color groups here, you can just add them as well and then delete all of them simply by clicking the delete swatch button down here. Now you'll get asked again and then we just click yes. And if we have something else in here in our swatches panel that we don't want, we'll just select those again and then delete them as well. Then I'm clicking the delete button again and now all we have left is our swatch here. Now we're going back to the flyout menu and then we scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says save swatch library as AI. This will save an AI file or Illustrator file 
and it will place it into the proper folder right away within Illustrator on your computer. So let's click it, and then here in the pop-up, what you'll see is that it automatically will put it in swatches. So let's call it isometric pattern, and then we'll click save. Now, for example, we're going to open a new file, doesn't matter what size. Now, when we have a look here in the swatches panel, you can see there is no isometric pattern. But don't worry, it is saved and you can open it up again. Simply go to the flyout menu, scroll to open swatch library, and then all the way down here to user defined. And now here you can see the isometric pattern that we've saved. Now we just click it and we have a new panel opening up with our pattern for the isometric grid. Now next what we want to do, we want to turn this pattern here that we have into a guide. And let me show you how to do that. Now usually when you draw something, a line or a shape, you can set it as a guide. You simply have to go to view, guides, and then make guides. Now this is a pattern that we've created. And I selected the rectangle where we filled the pattern in. Now if I was to choose here make guides, it would all disappear. We are not seeing any guides. So we have to undo and first expand our pattern. This won't change anything here with our swatch pattern. This is yours to keep. You've created it and it's in your swatch panel. Now first we want to make sure we have the rectangle selected and then we're going to object and then we're going to choose expand. Here in the pop-up we'll only have one option. We'll check the fill and then we press OK. Now we have to do something else. It still won't help us if we turn it into a guide. So let me show you. If I go down to view guides and then make guides, it still says can't make the selection into guides. Guides cannot be created or released within the selected object type. So what we have to do is we have to go back to object with our stuff still selected. Go down to the clipping mask and then choose release. Now watch what happens. Now we release the clipping mask, but you can see we have all these rectangles happening as well. All of those rectangles are clipping masks. And since we release them, We'll see them now on top of our pattern. They don't have a stroke or a fill, but they're there. So if we were to turn this into a guide, they would be turned into guides as well, and that would get really confusing. Now let me show you how we can get rid of those little rectangles. See, if I deselect, we won't see them. If we switch to the outline view, you can see that they're still there. So let's go back to the regular view. Now first, we have to ungroup everything. So we'll select it, we go to Object, Ungroup. Then again, Object, Ungroup, and probably one more time, again, Object, Ungroup. And maybe a fourth time, when I hover over any of the shapes, and I can easily select one of these rectangles. Those rectangles do not have a fill, nor do they have a stroke. And since I have the Smart Guide still on, when I hover with the selection tool over it, I can easily identify it. We also have a big rectangle, the main rectangle that was used for the clipping mask. Now I'm going to select this, and as you can see here, we have no fill and no stroke. Now we want to select everything that has no fill and no stroke. But if we were to go about it one by one, it would take forever, but there's an easy way to select even objects that don't have a fill or a stroke. So let's go up to select, same, and let's choose same fill and stroke. Now this will look for everything that does not have a fill and a stroke. So once we select it, as you can see now on the screen, it selected every single rectangle that has no fill and no stroke. Now all we have to do now is hit the delete button on the keyboard and delete those objects. And now we have just our pattern. Now just to zoom in really close to show you, that's all we have left. Just the pattern that we've created. Just select all of it and then go back to View, Guides, and now choose Make Guides. We have now turned our pattern into an isometric grid guide. And if I zoom in, you can see I have set my guides to a light blue. Yours might look a little bit different. And let me quickly show you where you can change that. Under Illustrator, Preferences, Guides and Grid, here you can change the color. I set it to a custom color, a blue grayish color, so that's easy on the eyes when you create your isometric designs. And now since we have still the smart guides on and we have guides that help us to draw our objects, let me quickly show you 
how we can create our isometric custom designs really nicely and easily with those guides. So let me just select a color, set it as a fill, use the pen tool, and then I'm going to click and create my shapes that I need for my isometric designs. And as you can see, I can turn our guides on and off. So simply press either the command or control key and the semicolon on the keyboard. Guide is gone, guide is back. We also want to make sure that the guides are locked. So just make sure that your guides are locked so you don't select them. And that's it. This is the setup for our isometric grid. Next, I'm going to show you how you can create your castle tower with this isometric grid. It's going to be a speed art video. So I hope you're going to join me and watch the next video and see how you can use this particular isometric grid pattern for your creations of isometric design. Hope to see you in the next video then.